miles an hour. I am just chilling out in a beanbag chair, relaxing here between work. <laughs> Listen to a little weather on the uh, VHF. Well, hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and as you can see, I'm not actually on the boat this week. In this week's episode, we do two sort of things that are very different than one another. First, we're going to go ahead and get that glass port installed in the side of the boat. We'll go ahead and show you how we did that, how we did that, how we finished putting that glass into the actual opening that we prepped in last week's video. Also this week, uh, I flew up to New Jersey. My dad lives in New Jersey by himself. He had uh, a scheduled surgery to have, um, so I came up here to take him in for the surgery. It was a little bit extensive, so we expected uh, several days in the hospital and then to, to come home and assume they would need a little bit of help for a, a few days or a week or two. So plan on coming up here to New Jersey. Um, and as I did, it was kind of neat. I, I haven't... I haven't kind of wandered around here. When I've come, I've come to visit my dad and, you know, stay at his house and we, we hang around and do things that are sort of touristy. Um, but coming here and actually checking out the neighborhood where he built his house and whatnot was really kind of cool and nostalgic. I'll take you along for that because uh, my dad built his own house. So I'll talk a little bit about that more in the video. So hope you guys enjoy this week's video and we'll see you next week. I've gone ahead and put on several different coats of fairing. And as you can see here, you, you can definitely see where the fairing is along the top. But the reality is that feels really smooth. So once this all gets painted with white paint on that edge, it will look good here and uh, nice and smooth. You won't actually see that fairing. I actually did a little bit of the same thing right over here, right on the side of this window. I went ahead and did the same here, nice and smooth, the front and um, back portions of it as well. Forgive the curtain, I have it hung up so I could sand there. So I'm not about... I'm now about to go outside and remove this uh, temporary porthole cover, uh, wipe it all down with acetone, and we will be sealing it up with a little bit of 3M4000. I like this 4000 for ports that are going to be exposed to the UV and still remain flexible. That's got a 350 horse on it. <laughs> that thing must take off like a bat out of hell. So if you recall in last week's video, we finished going ahead and, and repairing the inside of the coach house wall. We put new marine grade plywood in there. We uh, thickened epoxy and, and sealed it all up on the inside of this wall you're, you're seeing here. And then we also went ahead and fared and sanded and prepared that surface on the inside for paint. And that was easier to do with the glass out of the opening. It allowed me to get a sander right in along that edge. And now what we're going to do is we want to go ahead and, and install the actual glass. So a couple things we need to do to prepare. The first thing we need to do is remove this temporary cover that's on here. Uh, and I used, uh, this is kind of like radiant barrier for a home. It's like bubble wrap sandwiched between two layers of aluminum foil. And I put it up against the boat here with an aluminum tape used for like HVAC ducts. The good news about that is... It kept the water and the weather out. And now that it's off of here, I'm going to start cleaning up and preparing that surface. So upon closer inspection, I noticed that when I did my epoxy on the back side, there were a couple spots where the epoxy just ran between the, the uh, inner surface that I attached to and a little bit below. And I wanted to get this surface where the glass would bed right up against fairly smooth. So you can kind of see I'm kind of doing this along the inside of the frame, along the exterior of the frame, the seating uh, area, and then just cleaning up any other areas that didn't appear to be fairly smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. Quite frankly, I'm going to have my 3M sealant in here. You'll, I'll talk more about in a minute, but I still wanted to get the surface ready to go for that particular glass being inserted. And then anytime you're going to uh, bed something or fiberglass something or epoxy something, you always want to make sure that the surface is prepared and clean and there's no oils or any anything on the surface that would prevent the adhesion of whatever it is you're working on. So I use acetone for this uh, and you can see here I'm, I'm wiping acetone on. I actually found a small spot where I needed to do a little bit more sanding. I could feel it with the rag and then continue that same process with acetone. The beauty of acetone is it dries very quickly and I know some of you will say I should have gloves on. You're absolutely right. I should. I don't always do it when I'm doing a small amount here. I probably should for sure. So I'm sure I'll hear about that in the comments below. Sorry, folks. Got the cover off and it's all cleaned up with acetone. 
And now I'll go ahead and uh, test fit the glass. So this is the, obviously the new piece of glass. You see it's not the old cracked one I used in last week's video just to make sure I had the right router trimming around here. But I'm setting it in and I'm making sure that it seats all the way in fairly, um, fairly snug. I don't want it pushing or making contact on all the edges, but I want to make sure it fits in here. Um, and now that I know it does, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. What you see, what you don't see off camera is I, I now wipe both sides around where the seating is going to be with acetone because again, I want to make sure there's no oil from my skin touching that. So I'll save you all the time of watching um, us caulk this, but essentially I've talked about this a little bit before, right? Open up the caulk container, poke a hole in it, leave it a cut at an angle so that it's uh, the right size for the surface you're ultimately uh, putting the, the, the material in. But I like to use this 3M4000 product. You know, we've all heard of 5200 or 4200, often referred to as devil's juice just because of how permanent it can be. Um, this 4000, 3M4000 product remains highly flexible. It has UV protect in it and, and it is also a combination between sort of an adhesive and a sealant. Um, I like to use it when I'm bedding a, uh, a lens into something and specifically I like it for glass. Um, it's, it's proven really well for me in the past. So that's the product I'm using. It's what I've used on all the other ports. It's what I'll use here as well. Well we now have the glass in and you can see it's a little messy where the sealant is but that's okay. I will trim that up with a razor blade after it cures completely. But there we go. Looks good so far. This week, my dad actually had to go in for some some fairly ser serious surgery, uh, and I came up to New Jersey to you know spend some time while he was in the hospital, and then take care of him at home after that. Um, the good news is he's doing great. He had a surgery; everything went as planned. He's in recovery, but I'm now going to be here for a little bit of time, maybe a couple of weeks. Um, and it's been a little bit nostalgic. So I got here the day before uh, the planned surgery, and you know took my dad to the hospital. He's been in the hospital, been coming back to the house every night. It's been kind of nostalgic because when I was a kid, a teenager, uh, I lived in Texas, my dad lived in New Jersey, and every summer I would come up and stay the summer with my dad. And he, at the time, he was building his own house. He would work during the day, he would drive his car back up to the, the lot where he was gonna build it, and he literally built everything himself. So in the summers, I would come down and I would help him. And, and you know, obviously when you're doing something like that yourself, it's a multi-year project. So it was really kind of cool. I'll show you, I'll show you some uh, things that I saw this week that were just a little bit nostalgic. Maybe you'll find them interesting, maybe you won't, I don't know. But um, yeah, back in, this is New Jersey. Um, and New Jersey in early April is still chilly. Um, give you an idea just how chilly. I'm not so cool on that. So that very first summer that we were here, you can kind of see the house, you go in on the ground floor up front, and in the back you kind of come out in the basement on the ground floor because it's built on a hill. But that very first year, um, it was just when he got started. He had had the lot excavated. That was it. And um, he had this old pickup truck that he would leave here and in the back of it, he had one of those camper tops on it. And that's where he would keep all his tools and whatnot. Well, he hadn't drilled a well yet. There wasn't city water here yet. And because we were going to do it ourselves, we had to mix all of the cement for the cinder blocks to lay the entire basement uh, and garage foundation. So what we would do is we would come over here, get that pickup truck and a bunch of five gallon buckets, and we would drive down to this little creek and get water, bring the water back up. And listen, I'm not that old, like there was running water back at the time, but that's what he had to do at that, at that point in its construction. So it was really pretty cool. <clears throat> But that was that first year. We laid the entire foundation and then I went home for the summer um, or for the winter back to school when I was in high school. And the next year I came back and the framing was just about complete and he was starting to put the roof decking and shingles on. So I helped with that part of it and uh, building out some of the uh, framework for all the doors and the windows. So it was a really cool experience getting to come over here every summer, help my dad with the house uh, kind of between school years. Um, and you know, maybe that's part of the reason why I have some of the confidence to do some of the do it, do it yourself stuff that I 
I do. Uh, I always joke around that I have more confidence than skill. But, you know, those kind of experiences, when you sort of see somebody close to you that says, if I want to do it, I can. And um, and he built this entire house himself. I think there was a couple of small things he, he had a contractor come in for. One might have been the electrical certification, and I think the other might have been um, when they installed the... the um, the heating system because it had to have an underground um, tank, you know, for heating oil. So I think those were some of the things he hired out, but everything else he did himself, which is really pretty cool. Let me show you that little creek. It's kind of neat. It's just, it's just about five or six blocks down. I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the creek we used to come fill up that water. And it's about eight or 10 blocks from my dad's house. We'd take the pickup truck. We'd drive over here. I'd take five gallon buckets. I'd scoop up the water, put it right in the back of the pickup. And then I'd sort of creep on back to his house in hopes to not spill too much of it. So there was still plenty of it to mix up all the cement. Um, but it was really, it, it's kind of a neat little experience. And I grew up that uh, when I was a kid, the, the house we lived in here in New Jersey, um, we had a little creek like this that ran kind of right behind our house. Not this big, much smaller. Uh, you know, it's probably, it was probably a drainage ditch now as an adult I think back to it but man we would play in that thing so much we'd build little boats in the garage little wooden boats out of pieces of scrap wood that we had laying around and you know me and my friends would go all the way up the end of the road where we could get into the creek and we'd put these little things down and we'd let them race in the little the little rapids of the creek the whole way down and just had a blast and as we got a little older maybe 10 years old we got brave and we would follow them all the way through the round cement drainage ditches that would go under the road so you know the boats would be floating down through there and we'd be running behind them in this nasty swampy water. I can't believe I didn't have dysentery or something as a kid, but it's been a cool experience kind of coming back here and seeing some of this too. <laughs> I'm down here at the Jersey Shore. So at the old MDV show, the Jersey Shore was filmed right here at Seaside Heights, but this is where as a kid, we used to come all the time. This place right behind me, Lucky Leo's, was frankly a staple. And if we came to the beach, we were gonna go play ski ball up there and see if we could win some little trinkety prizes. Uh, it's dark, it's nighttime, it's cold out, so there's nothing really going on, but it's still, nonetheless, cool as hell to, you know, just sort of come out here where, hell, I was hanging out here a lot as a kid, and even offshore I can see there's, there's fishing boats out there. There's probably a lot of noise from the wind. It's windy as can be today. $2, I got my whopping nine tickets. I'll leave them for some other kid here, but you know, it was fun. A little nostalgic. Had to go play a little ski ball <laughs> and uh, back out on the boardwalk. Let's see if I can't walk out on the beach. My dad lived in Belmar. We used to ride our bikes up and down this boardwalk for, as a kid, it seemed like it was miles and miles. Maybe it wasn't that much, but we'd ride bikes. And I can remember the other cool thing you can see how all the boards that run at 45 degree angles up in Belmar, they used to have a set of the boardwalks that ran lengthwise. It was perfect for skateboarding and roller skating. I'd skateboard and my sister would roller skate and we would just go forever. It was fun. Where we used to hang out. This right here is Casino Pier. Kind of see the sign right there. That's what it says. Casino Pier, if I can get it to focus on it. Jersey Shore like it looks pretty anticlimactic right now but man did we spend a lot of time out here and what's wild is right now they put all these dunes out here I guess after Sandy and they used to just cut right off of the boardwalk down onto the beach uh, I can remember as a kid playing underneath the boardwalks all the time building sandcastles and everything else in there but you can tell these are recently planted you can see little rows of dune grass or whatever it is I'll start heading back find a place to eat some kind of waterfront crappy food <laughs> like a steak sandwich or something <laughs> there's something good and unhealthy but boy is that a Jersey Shore thing right there so the original steaks from 50 years ago <laughs> steak sandwich 
So in my dad's basement, he's got a little workshop, and I wish I was this neat. All the paints are nice and organized. They go to this side of the shop. The tools are all fairly organized, right down to the books with their own holders. It's kind of neat the way he's utilized space in here, because this isn't very big. It's maybe, I don't know, 10 by 10, 12 by 12. <laughs> Got the table saw, radial arm saw, drill press and band saw, and grinder, and a little shop back system, and a little table saw, a little router table, and then you know the, the workbench right here in the middle of the middle of the room. And this is interesting. You see the little handle on the wall? So when you're cutting something really large, you just open that up and it opens up a groove all the way to the other room so you can lay an eight or ten foot board down there. <laughs> it's like he's been building bird feeders. Pretty cool. even with a little nail latch right in there to keep it from opening. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video where we showed how to prep that surface. Don't forget, join us next week when we actually bed the glass in. Also, thanks for coming along on a little bit of a nostalgic ride for me as I traveled off the boat to come up to New Jersey where I grew up. Thanks, everybody. If you do enjoy these videos, please do uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. That ultimately helps us the most. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do so and click on that little bell notification and we'll notify you every time we upload a new video. Thanks, everybody. From Gil aboard the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, or not aboard the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser today, safe sailing. <laughs>